Anza Borrego is California's biggest state park, packed with desert flowers, out-of-this-world art, and some of the most unique geologic features you can find. But if you want to see the best this park has to offer, you'll need patience, navigation, and a capable rig. So when my parents flew in and opted for a rental RV with side steps and not-so-great ground clearance, I had my doubts if we'd make it. Fish Creek Wash is not the hardest road to drive, but it is remote without reliable cell service, so travel with friends is recommended. The drive into this wash is a sight to behold with a spectacular split mountain, which is what it sounds like. This bad boy was split in half by massive earthquakes 5.7 million years ago, and over time water eroded it into the spectacular canyon that we drive through today. Those earthquakes also created a special geologic feature. This is Split Mountain. One of the coolest parts of it is that arch right there. That thing is called the anticline. The anticline is a result of massive compression on these rocky layers. Imagine you have a flexible piece of paper and you push both ends towards each other, causing the middle part to rise up. This upward fold in the paper is similar to how an anticline is formed in geology. It boggles my mind to imagine rocks bending under pressure, but that's what happened here. While this is a favorite stopping point for us to scramble around and play, there's more geology to see. So we head to the wind caves. Sandwiches. There goes Brody bit by with strawberry. After the anticline, one of the first things that you'll encounter are the wind caves. This is where you park. You can see we're just kind of hanging out here, having a little picnic. And the trailhead is right over there. This hike is not hard, but getting up and out of the wash will take your breath away for the first part of it. One mile, can't be that hard. The hike up to the wind caves opens up into a beautiful view of the aptly named Elephant's Knees Mesa and allows you to really appreciate the size of the wash and vast Carrizo Badlands that feed it water when it rains. When it rains, all of these hills will funnel the water down into that wash and that wash becomes a raging river. I know a guy who is up here hiking with his dad in the wind caves. This hike parked right where we are. The storm came through and took the truck away. You gotta be really careful if there's any chance of rain. You don't want to be in the wash. We found them! We've seen wind caves formed in sandstone plenty of other places, but none like this. The size and grouping of these caves makes it seem like a village out of a Star Wars movie just dropped right here in the middle of the Badlands. Oh my goodness, they're in a cave! I can't even fit through there, you guys. That was so cool. Mile Hike Inn only has 259 feet of elevation gain, but it always seems a little tougher than I remember. This place is a playground for the boys and they could go on and on, but we know there's more geology up the wash. So we hop in the rigs and head towards Sandstone Canyon. Good to go. It's nice and easy. There you go. You're down. And then just go slow when your rear tires get there too. There you go. And you're off. Easy peasy. <laughs> As we 
set up our campsite at the canyon entrance, my buddy Greg shows up, and my oldest is ecstatic to see him. Woohoo! Greg knows a lot about Jeeps, is amazing with kids, and genuinely a good person. So he gets the invite to come every time we go camping. He knew my parents were here doing their annual trip, and just like last year, he made the effort to come out for a night. No problem. So hi. You can still get your campfire going in Anza Borrego. The only rule is it has to be in a metal container. With that sorted out, we're ready to get cooking and indulge in some tasty campfire eats. This uh, cook over these coals on one side, and we'll flip it all over again, and we're gonna have some seriously good eating. The campfire cooks the bottom pretty well, but it just doesn't get the top. And that's why you need a flamethrower at camp. slept pretty well last night. It was originally forecast to be raining. It's not raining. That's pretty awesome. It was originally forecasted to be uh, cold and it's not cold. So <laughs> we lucked out. You see a shot like this and you know this is Sandstone Canyon. Probably the most famous spot that off-roaders will come to in Anza Borrego. Millions of years of sand deposits from the Colorado River flooding of the Sea of Cortez uh, and really just layer after layer of sand was put here and then water has come through and cut this narrow canyon through what is now sandstone. These walls go 80 feet, 100 feet above you, just straight up. Super cool to see. One of the side canyons off of Sansom Canyon. Something not a lot of folks visit, we haven't visited before. This one has a little watering hole, so a lot of animal tracks back by it, which is crazy because you don't think of animals being out here, but they are. It was just muddy for us here today, but uh, after a fresh rain, you can believe there is wildlife and water. After taking our drive through Sansone Canyon, Greg had to leave and he chose to drive up the infamous Diablo drop-off, not once, but twice before heading home. We 
drove to the flower fields of Coyote Canyon for our final night and reflected on our trip. The breathtaking split mountain, the enchanting wind caves, the mesmerizing sandstone canyon, these geologic wonders are truly awe-inspiring. But it's not just the stunning scenery that makes Anza Borrego special. It's the people we share it with. The bonds we strengthen, the memories we create together, the joy of disconnecting from our hectic lives to reconnect with each other and with nature is a gift beyond measure. As we traverse through this natural wonderland, we're reminded of the power of exploration, curiosity, and the great outdoors. Anza Borrego is a treasure that reminds us to slow down Take a breath and appreciate the beauty and the wonder of the world around us.